I'm here at the Jordan National Design Week with Ziad Kouede. And where are you from? Uh, I'm uh, from Jordan, but my ancestors, they come from Hebron. In Palestine. In Palestine, of course. And you have this wonderful exhibit here, which is quite extraordinary that you told me the king and queen saw last night and they really liked it. So can you, uh, each one of these embroideries tells a very important story about Palestine and the roots. Can you tell me how you became interested in embroidery? Okay, um, fortunately my family were uh, so much into collecting the old saw, the Palestinian saw. The, uh, the over what, 50 years old. What is Palestinian form? It's the dress, the old dress that we seen used to wear, and they used to. It was always handmade and it was fully handmade. So I was supposed. I was a kid at the time, and I was supposed to take care of her. some. Every few few months, I'm the kid that would take them out to the sun, so the material will not go bad, and then I would return it and. I got in love with them as a kid, actually. Did you watch the women embroider them? No, I never. I never. And, uh, but if you look at the pieces and the technique and the coloring, it's, it's amazing. So you taught so yourself? Was, yes, I taught myself. Wow. I was inspired as a kid. Can you explain yes. your works of art, please? Yes. I'm not going to start with the face. And this is the face from another wall. You see here the eyes. You can see the groove canyon under the eyes. This face has been crying for long. And you see here the tensions around the eyes. Okay. Also here the topography of the face. It gets the, the feel almost like this, the face will melt but actually it will not melt because this face uh, help it acquire the wire look uh, the wire that surrounds him but uh, the surroundings that affected him he's living with the surroundings he became part of it unfortunately this is uh, the same face face under siege under occupation it's a face from another world and definitely it's a face from another world we don't know. It's the whole planet, no one on the planet is like the way they live. Okay, and here we go to the second piece. This second piece, actually here, the whole, all these pieces are, are I have to say this, they're done the old uh, way our ancestors used to, to, to make their pieces and uh, they used to have in every uh, piece different techniques. I'm trying to hear in my pieces uh, to use different techniques in every piece that they used to use to show the methods and that I taught myself just by vision, by looking at, at the, uh, the old toe. And here you can see in the middle, it's the bold technique and on the side, it's the discrete technique. And uh, the bold technique uh, at the time, we used to use it to uh, we'd have like a motif on very bold motif on on the dresses that would tell what city they are from or what uh, what village they come from. So be careful. Okay, I'm deep from this city. And then we'd have this, these discrete motifs, and the discrete motifs would be just personal things for them. They would only people who come very close to them can read them just for relatives and friends. And I'm using the second technique on the size, as I said. Unfortunately, this piece, it's, it's all of it, the people we lost in wars. And this, unfortunately, the, the, their bloods when they go down, and it's in, into stars, our stars. And uh, the size, uh, the size of the, this piece, when those same uh, dots, they retreat right and left, far above. So this second technique, I used it to give a sense of space. And you can see, in these pieces here, uh, the stars, some of them brighter than the, the others. And unfortunately, too, here we have another grid here not yet filled. I'm afraid many people will go, hopefully not.
we go to the second piece here. The second piece here, and uh, this is another technique used to use through color variation. You can feel the sense of move, movement in this piece, as if the blood is dripping on the Palestinian flag, and it's giving it the reddish color, changing the colors. Also, we have here uh, the segregation wall, the apartheid wall. All these pieces, they start from here. Yes, this is the first piece. And this is our hope. Our hope that this, this wall will, one day will disappear. And you can see here, almost, we have like windows of hope start opening and more cracking. And when you have a flash here and there, to more flash and more cracking, more, more into, into disappearing hopefully one day cracking cracking disappearing our hope hopefully one day we have peace until it disappeared so the world dissolves yes peacefully yes and here we have uh, we have a bear flying full speed liberty this this bird He's spreading his wings all the way. He's like an arrow. He's going very fast. He cannot believe he's, he's, he's free finally. He's following another two bears. They, they took their freedom a while ago and they're enjoying it. This piece here, it's the kite. The kite that we, we all we play with when we're young. And here there's another technique too. And you see the, uh, the, the different use of red I'm using here. And this technique our ancestors used to use it to, to show uh, importance to, 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 to the meaning or to the sign they, they're using, or uh, to show wealth. So it's, as if, although they are using cotton, but it would give the, the, the sense of the silkness. And here I use it for all what we've seen so far. But unfortunately, our route has been very bloody and even you know the old days we used to go from Amman and would go to, to Haifa and Yafa and swim. It was fun. Our ancestors tell us all the fun stories and how everyone was living nicely together. So uh, here our aspiration you see the, the, the sides of this piece the around it you see the green and the blue and this represents uh, uh, our hope to return back peacefully and the prosperity for all. This piece here for this piece here is for uh, always in our culture we have things for hocus pocus and for bad eyes and whatever. This is actually the hand. We have the five dots here and the five dots here uh, it's against bad eye but I made it in fine yes, art. In yes, in real art. And, and uh, you know, I, I made it uh, into a fine art, it's just abstract uh, way. Uh, beside it, uh, we have an, a, a religious piece. And why I, uh, I put the two beside each other? Because actually in our culture, it's, it's, it's a bit funny that we always have the two together and we believe in a way or not, it's just many times more we believe in the, both of them, although they contradict each other. Okay. What do you mean to what? Uh, they contradict each other because... Uh, what contradicts each other? Yes, because in our religion, we are not supposed to believe in these... Uh, the the, the eye and magical okay. things, okay. you know? So it's actually, it's against our religion. Right. But, but, but we, all, we always have this and... Some people just do it just for fun, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's just part of the culture. Okay. Uh, here, those three pieces here, uh, uh, these are the windows of hope, but also through color variation, the technique our ancestors used to use, it, it, they give you the sense of opening, closing. This is when, when we hear, you know, sometimes we have the feel that uh, peace is coming and all of a sudden everything go wrong and you know, these windows start to close in our faces, unfortunately. These three pieces here, 
these are the Joker cases. And why the Joker? Uh, and why the Joker? Because uh, we need all the luck in the world to get out of the mess we are in. Yes. Uh, because, uh, you know, especially now, it's a big war, and, and the worst that the religion is in the middle, it's the worst scenario ever. So in order to get in this mess, we need like big time jokers, all the luck in the world to get out of this mess. This piece was as hard as the face. And this is a face from another world. And this is a language from another world. And why a language from another world? Because, you know, the whole, the whole nations came here in this big fight here. And all the, the news in all languages, it's the story of the planet, all languages, but as if no one is listening, no one is understanding, as if there is no way of communication. So I thought maybe we need a new language because the, the destruction doesn't stop, the, the war, the bloodshed, and the, the refugees. So maybe we need a new language. And here, when I chose it, it was not easy actually to create a language that doesn't look like any other language we know. Yet I wanted it to be related to this area. So it would be to, to be from our ancestors, you know, from very early civilization lived in this area, our ancestors. Yet I want it to be very dynamic. Every every uh, one of the alphabet, I, I wanted it to be very dynamic. Actually, every uh, alphabet uh, here is one of us. This guy is is catching to the to the rock with his hand. This other guy is catching to the rock with his hands and legs. The guy beside him with his is catching the rock with his hand. The one in front of him with his hand and legs. But at the end, it's a rope, and God knows if it breaks. And here are the most important three pieces actually. Because, and you, you notice the technique I use here, it's, uh, it's a bit complicated and it's, it's very rich. The technique is, the design is rich, the coloring is rich too. And uh, I, I wanted to do just a piece of what some of the dresses, you know, the old Palestinian dresses is to how they were made. Uh, and this shows how rich our heritage that we carry with us. And actually these three pieces are three cells. The first cell, uh, the first cell is Palestinians in uh, 1948, and the Palestinians 1967, and Palestinians all around the world. And, you know, I had, uh, you know, even I had some people, uh, Europeans the other day, uh, they were glad that I explained this point here because they have been living in Jordan for two years and they have been asking their, uh, you know, their neighbors and friends, Palestinian friends, what's the deal? What, what's the problem? You're living nicely, you're working, everything here is okay. In Jordan, we are living nicely, but other countries, but, uh, you know, Palestinians are not living nicely. So, yeah. Uh, so, so they're asking the Palestinians in Jordan, what's the deal? And here is the thing, okay, we're working and everything and we're fine, but we have these strong roots, we're deeply rooted there. So there's always something missing. This is the most important thing. And uh, you notice uh, those two cells on this side, they're spreading this side, and this cell is spreading the other side, but they're catching the winds from the different angles. And it shows uh, how the, the Palestinians sometimes they use different methods to reach their goal. But you notice that all the recording at the same uh, point at the end. The one in the middle, unfortunately, this one, the one in the middle, this this one, the 1967 Palestinians. It's uh, unfortunately the road has been the bloodiest, and it's, it's the worst case scenario for them. We are all in, you know, you can see like uh, we resemble each other very much, but this is the bloodiest, unfortunately. And here, uh, this piece for the for the right of return, and uh, you can see the repetition of the keys in red, and sometimes in between you have small flowers, red flowers. And 